This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by HostGator Web Hosting. Web hosting completely powered by green energy. Get 25% off your order with a Revision 3 discount. Coming up on Destructoid, Portal 2 has a famous celebrity in it, Mortal Kombat is too violent for the land down under, and we've got some Korean leakage on a possible new version of Street Fighter for consoles. All this and more coming up on Destructoid. Welcome everyone to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Happy Monday, Max. Happy Monday. It was a great weekend. We had an awesome time at PAX. Uh -huh, just kidding, we weren't there. Yeah, mm. we made that joke. Oh, yeah, I, I don't care. I'm still mad we didn't go to PAX. <gasps> I'm pretty pissed too, actually. It we sounds like everybody good, had a really good time. Yeah. Um, I heard that you got I got a little, little shout, shout out, out from Mr. Clifford Blazinski. Uh, I guess he was hanging out with Hamza and he, he specifically told Hamza to punch me in the face, which, you know, if Destructoid was a normal company, would probably be a rampant HR violation. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Hamza's my boss and he's probably gonna be punching me. Well, you know, point. he doesn't get back in town till tomorrow, yeah. so if you feel like maybe you want a punch today. I'm, I'm gonna go buy a I'm just offering, you know. I'm, catcher's catcher's mask and I'm just, here if you need me, Max. I'm here you can you. practice punching me in the face to warm up for the punch that I'll get later. Okay, first, uh, before any punches happen, let's take a moment to hear about this week's releases from the Nick Chester. He doesn't pull any punches, folks. I don't know. Jokes. Jokes. Painting a future where the U.S. is invaded by the Korean People's Army, THQ's politically charged first-person shooter Homefront is out this week. And the already popular Halo Reach gets a shot in the arm with a Defiant Map Pack, an 800 Microsoft Point add-on that brings two new versus maps and one new firefight map to the game's multiplayer mix. The fourth installment of 2K's popular Top Spin Tennis series is out, and it's prepared to shock everyone when they learn that yes, it's definitely still a tennis game, except this one's prettier and more tennessee than ever before. And grab some beers and three friends because Slam Bolt Scrappers hits PlayStation Network this week. It's like Smash Brothers meets Puzzle Fighter meets Tetris, with a beverage mode control configuration that allows you to play with a single hand. So while playing, you can easily take a drink or masturbate. Look, somebody had to say it. Check out Destructoid.com where Hamza Aziz brings you a full list of releases every Monday. Over the last crumbling mountain. Thanks Nick, on to the news. Insomniac Studios, who you may know as the creators of the Resist Resistance series, uh, that's a hard word, um, announced at South by Southwest this weekend that they're expanding their operations. They're creating a new division of the company called Insomniac Click, which is going to be responsible for mobile and social gaming. And if you're thinking they're going to be like every other cutesy Facebook game, then you would be wrong. Brian Hastings, the chief creative officer of um, Insomniac Games, said in a blog post on their website that they're working on a project right now, which is a game that he says has all the depth and content of a console game, but will be playable for free on Facebook. He went on to say that they want to eliminate the experience that you currently get from most Facebook games uh, by making social interactions within the game mutually enjoyable, meaning you won't have to send your friends 15 requests every day asking for bundles of sticks or whatever it is you need to build your teepee. I applaud Insomniac for trying to challenge the standard that seems to have been set by Zynga so far. And on that note, I would just like to say that I recently overcame my Cityville addiction. Three weeks sober, and I'm happy to report that I feel great. Okay, Cityville. Well, speaking of things that totally suck, the Australian Classification Review Board has decided that Mortal Kombat is too violent to be released in Australia. Currently, Australia has some, of, some pretty strict policies as far as censorship goes, and um, there's no rating for video games that corresponds with a mature rating, so uh, the highest thing they have is MA15+, which basically means uh, if you're under the age of 15, you have to go with a parent or guardian to buy video games. And I'll admit, Mortal Kombat is one of the most gruesome games I've played in recent years, but it's, it's Mortal Kombat. Like, it's been around for a while. You'd think the kind of the shock value would have worn off by now. It's, it's so over the top, it's like self-parody. Australian gamers are still pushing for an addition of an 18 plus rating so that they can have, you know, games with, you know, hookers and guns and drugs and stuff, but it doesn't look like that will be around in time for Mortal Kombat. And this, uh, this breaks my heart because Australia is generally pretty badass. It's a country founded by British convicts and inhabited by some of the weirdest, most terrifying animals on earth. They have Manabar, a video game nightclub where you can get drunk and play Xbox, and come on, Road Warrior. But they're banning Mortal Kombat, so condolences to any Aussie gamers out there. I recommend doing what I used to do when my mom wouldn't let me play violent video games, which is go outside and get in actual fights with people. 
Have you seen the spiders they have in Australia? I don't like to think They'll about them. They'll fucking eat your face, man. They have a spider that will chase you and kill you. God. And it'll fucking eat your wallet, oh, too. Oh, it's so terrifying. I don't even want to think about it. Okay. While we're on the topic of ratings boards, though, um, Korea's game rating board may have spilled the beans on a new console version of Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. Capcom Korea was listed as the publisher, and the Korean ratings board rated the game twice, which usually means that um, they rate it one for each console, so Xbox 360 and PS3. Captivate, which is Capcom's annual press event, is just one short month away, so maybe expect to hear more about it then, or maybe not. Um, they just registered the title, you know, so let's be patient. All this leakage. Yeah, that, that's a good, it's, it's gross. Yeah. How about you just do the, the sponsor read okay. for us? Looking for a place to launch a blog or a website, but frustrated with customer support at your current hosting provider? Go to HostGator.com and get up and running in minutes. With plans starting at just $4.95 a month, you can get top-rated 24-7 customer support and access to tools including a website builder with over 4,000 templates. HostGator will even migrate your current site for free. Their servers are 130% powered by wind energy. It's completely green web hosting. HostGator also offers unlimited disk space and bandwidth, a 45-day money-back guarantee, and a $100 Google AdWords credit to market your website. Right now, for Vision 3 viewers, HostGator is offering 25% off your order or your first month free. Go to HostGator.com and enter the code DESTRUCTOID at checkout to get your discount. Okay, so who's excited for Portal 2? That's right, that's what I thought. <laughs> So as you probably already know, the much anticipated sequel to Valve's 2007 hit is coming out in about five weeks. And with the release so close, I wasn't really expecting any crazy announcements, but here's a good one. This weekend at PAX, Valve revealed that none other than J.K. Simmons would be lending his voice to Portal 2. You might know J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson from the Spider-Man movies, the dad in Juno, the scary neo-Nazi guy in Oz, the shrink from Law & Order, and also the yellow M&M. But it looks like Simmons will now be playing Cave Johnson, the founder of Aperture Science. Joystick managed to write down a few of his lines uh, in the new game, and this has got to be the best quote I've read all week. I'm not going to try and do an impression. Those of you who volunteer to be injected with praying mantis DNA, I've got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is we're postponing those tests indefinitely. The good news is we've got a much better test for you, fighting an army of mantis men. So, there we go. Valve declined to state exactly how big of a role Simmons' character would have, but they said we'd be hearing a lot of his voice. And uh, in other Portal 2 news, our producer informs us that The National has written a song for Portal 2. And I don't know anything about that band, so let's move on. Yeah, I don't know anything. I've never heard of that band either, actually. But I do love me some J.K. Simmons. Do love me some yellow M&Ms. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the 3DS. Satoru Iwata, the president of Nintendo, revealed today that The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3DS will be getting a bunch of new bonus features that weren't in the original game. He said that we'd have to wait until closer to the release to get more details about what they actually are, but we already know that the game is going to have improved graphics and it'll be easier to switch between items with the touchscreen. Um, expect to hear more about that sometime closer to June when the game comes out, Max? Yeah, I don't, I don't care. Really? Zelda? Oh, that looks stupid when it first came out. It still looks really stupid. Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Oh shit, I was thinking of Super Bombad Racing. How is that even remotely close? Tara, you like Angry Birds, right? Well, this weekend at South by Southwest, Rovio's, Rovio's Peter Vestabacker made a funny little remark. He claimed that console gaming was dying because console games cost too much and took too much effort to upgrade. Uh, while mobile gaming is definitely a growing market, I don't really think it's the place of one pig-hating slingshot enthusiast to make such ambitious claims. I mean, pff, Angry Birds. Is that your professional opinion? I, just, I, really, wanted, I really wanted to make fun of casual gaming and, and say, say pig-hating slingshot enthusiast. Why don't we uh, leave the Angry Birds news to me in the future? I don't even like the game. What are you <laughs> Okay. So, um, that's all the news that we have for today. But before we go, I want to tell you guys about something that we're trying tomorrow. Um, you guys know about Destructoid's chat feature, right? Max talked about it on one of last, week, last week's shows. Um, it's like Facebook chat, but it's better because you don't have to talk to your mom, you know, or whatever. Your mother's in Facebook. Yeah, and if you friend her, I will kill you. Anyway, if you haven't played around with the chat, you really should because it's pretty rad. Um, and it also allows chat rooms. So I thought it would be fun to set up a Destructoid show chat. You guys could 
come in there, chat with us, help us write um, Wednesday show, yeah, or at least because we're lazy. At right. least, right. or yeah. at least, uh, tell us what games you want to hear about or something. Um, it's really easy. You, you just have to have an account and be logged in on the website, and then you'll see a little Destructoid Show chat thing in the bottom right corner of the screen. Um, Max and I are going to be there tomorrow from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time, that's 9 to 11 Eastern time, and uh, we'll be chatting. We will be cybering with anybody who is interested in cybering. Nope, absolutely not. So that's Tuesday the 15th, 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time on destructoid.com. All the cybering you can cyber. Yes, come join us. We would love to cyber, cyber sex. With you. Cyber sex.